Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in chapter 2, thermochemistry, but we are now currently in 2.2 calorimetry. In this video, we're going to learn into the definition of heat capacity and the specific heat capacity. And we're going to look into the heat change in a constant pressure calorimeter or known as the simple calorimeter or the constant volume calorimeter or known as a bomb calorimeter. We're also going to do some calculation regarding the heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Alright, so without any further ado, let us start. So calorimetry is basically a method used in the laboratory in order to measure the heat change of the reaction. And apparatus used to measure the heat change is known as the calorimeter. So there are two types of calorimeter. First, we have the constant pressure calorimeter or known as a simple calorimeter. So it's a very simple setup made up of the styrofoam cups. And here is known as the constant volume calorimeter or known as the bomb calorimeter. And this is indicated by a steel bomb here in the part of the insulated container. All right. So now we're going to look into the simple calorimeter first. So a simple calorimeter is suitable in order to measure the enthalpy changes that take place in aqueous solution. So the outer styrofoam cups where we have the inner styrofoam cup which is the first layer and the outer uh, styrofoam cup is used to insulate the reaction mixture so that there is no heat loss to the surrounding. Okay, yang mana the uh, outer styrofoam cup ni bertindak sebagai penebat so that tak banyak heat yang keluar and we can maintain all the heat change. Alright, and the heat released by the reaction is absorbed by the solution where solution here can be water and also by the calorimeter. Okay. And now we're going to look into the bomb calorimeter. So for the bomb calorimeter, it is used to determine the enthalpies of the combustion much more accurately. And then we can do that with water where we fill in the container with water or we can use it use them without water. So when using a bomb calorimeter with water, the heat released from the combustion will be absorbed by the water and also by the calorimeter. Alright, so the idea is that when any substance is burned, the heat release will be absorbed by the water and also be absorbed by the container or the calorimeter. Okay, so there are some important terms that we need to know in this subtopic. First, we need to know the heat capacity, where the heat capacity is the amount of heat required in order to raise the temperature of a given quantity by 1 degree Celsius. It is measured in the unit of Joule per degree Celsius. Meanwhile, for the specific heat capacity, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of the substance by 1 degree Celsius. Alright, so if the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 Joule per gram per degree Celsius, it means that we need um, we need 4.1 Joule of energy in order to increase the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. Alright, so the difference here is 1 gram. Alright, and that's why we also have per gram here, and this one is without gram per gram here. The basic principle of the calorimeter works is by looking into the heat release by the reaction and the heat release by reaction is equal to the heat absorbed by the surrounding. So in the calorimeter, when the substance is being burned, uh, the heat release by the substance will be absorbed by its surrounding. And we're going to see what type of surrounding that will exist later on. All right. So. Uh, for the heat release, uh, we can denote it as Q is equal to MC delta T, where Q is equal to heat release by reaction, usually a combustion. M is the mass of substance. As a small letter C is a specific heat capacity, where we measure it in Joule per gram per degree Celsius. And delta T is the change in temperature, which is denoted as uh, degree Celsius. So if you put gram, Joule, per gram per degree Celsius and degree Celsius here, everything will be cancelled out and the unit of uh, Q going to be in the unit of Joule. Alright, or the other way that you can use that 
um, you can use Q equal to capital C delta T, where capital C, C besar ini, refer kepada MC, where M refer to the mass of the substance, and C is equal to the specific heat capacity. So basically, the capital C here refers to the heat capacity, where it is uh, denoted in the unit of joule per degree Celsius, because mass here in the unit of gram, and specific heat capacity here in the unit of joule per gram per degree Celsius. So when gram, when gram and per gram is being cancelled out, the heat, uh, it refers to the heat capacity where it is a joule per degree Celsius. Okay, so talking about this again, uh, we said that the surrounding have three situation where the heat release by the combustion can be absorbed by the calorimeter only where there is no water. So that's the first case. Or second, maybe the heat release only be absorbed by the solution or usually the water because the calorimeter uh, difference or the heat capacity is very negligible. So it can be by the water or the solution itself. Or the third situation, uh, it can be the combination of the calorimeter as well as the solution. Okay, and the solution used here usually water. So these are the surroundings and also the calculation that the formula for calculation that you can use. So for the calorimeter for the calorimeter only, you can use small letter C, small letter C, delta T, or here refers to a heat capacity of the calorimeter delta T. Okay, here refer to the specific heat capacity. The big let the capital letter C here refers to the heat capacity. The small letter here refer to the calorie meter. For water or solution, you can also use the same thing, which is Q is equal to MC delta T. But now, calorie meter you see, right? But for solution, we can change it with W for water or S. Okay? And same goes for the solution as well as the calorimeter, where this thing, calorimeter can be changed into this heat capacity of the calorimeter. All right. So this is depending on the type of question or the situations that you are dealing with. All right. To understand this better, let's look at the example. Okay. Uh, for example, one, 0 0.1 gram of hydrogen gas and excess oxygen were compressed and placed into a calorimeter with a heat capacity of 9.08 times 10 to the power of 4 joule per degree Celsius. So this is our heat capacity. C. The change in temperature of the calorimeter is 0 0.155 degrees Celsius. So this is our delta T. So we have to calculate the amount of heat released in the reaction to form water in kilojoule per mole. Okay, so the situation is be like 0 0.1 gram of, H, uh, of hydrogen gas is being placed inside the calorimeter without the water. So, when the hydrogen gas is being burned, the heat release by the combustion is absorbed by only the calorimeter. Okay? And the heat capacity of the calorimeter is given here. Okay? So, by understanding that, uh, heat release by the reaction is equal to heat absorbed by the calorimeter. So we can use Q reaction is equal to the C delta, uh, a big letter C which refers to the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Delta T is the heat change here. So the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 9.08 times 10 to the power of 4 joule per degree Celsius multiplied by the change in temperature which is 0 0.155 degree Celsius. So degree Celsius and degree Celsius per degree Celsius cancel out. So you have 141 times 10 to the power of 4 joule and it needs to be in the terms of kilojoule per mole right so you convert that into kilojoule first 14.1 kilojoule but now the we need to find the number of mole of the hydrogen gas that is being burned so it says here it uses a mass of 0 0.1 gram so you can find the number of mole by looking into a uh, mass divided by molar mass Right, so heat of combustion is producing one mole here. Right, so mole of hydrogen gas is equal to mass divided by molar mass, 
which is 0 0.1 divided by 2.02 .02. so you will get 0 0.049 mole so 0 0.049 mole produces 14.1 kilojoule of energy okay but now we want it in terms of per mole which we need it to be in one mole so one mole of h2o sorry one mole of yeah one mole of h2o equal to x energy so we can uh, cross multiply and we can find x here so 14 multiplied by 1 divided by 0 0.049 mole so what we're gonna get is 284 kilojoule so we couldn't leave it like this we need to make a conclusion so therefore the heat of the reaction delta h to form h2o is negative 284 kilojoule per mole sebab satu mole and negative because it is a heat release okay negative because heat is being released to the surrounding all right now we're going to do example two so for example two we have to calculate the amount of heat release in a reaction in an aluminium calorie meter with a mass of 3087 gram and it contains 1700 ml of water so the initial temperature of the calorimeter is initially 25 degrees celsius and it increased to 27.8 so we know that the change in temperature gonna be the final temperature minus the initial temperature 27.8 minus 25 so we will get 2.8 degrees celsius all right also given here is the specific heat capacity of aluminium calorimeter so we will denote it as a small letter c specific heat capacity and c here refers to the calorimeter meanwhile the specific heat capacity of water going to be a small letter c and w here refers to a water with a value of 4.18 joule per gram per degree celsius and the water density is given here because what we really need to measure the heat content is the the mass of the water not the volume so we can find the mass of the water by using the density but since it is equal to 1.0 gram per ml so we can directly know that it is 1700 gram to prove this you can use um, density is equal to mass of a volume so your density is 1.0 gram per ml you need the mass your volume given is 1700 ml so ma mass that you will obtain is 1700 gram okay now you already got all the information but in terms of concept it basically uh, happens when a reactant is being burned in the vessel bomb here so heat by combustion released by the uh, released by the reactant due to combustion will be absorbed okay this one is a release will then be absorbed by the water surrounding it okay and the heat will also be absorbed by the calorimeter surrounding it so we can say that um, heat released by the reaction is equal to the heat absorbed by the water and also heat absorbed by the calorimeter so the Q of the reaction is equal to the mass of the water um, specific heat capacity of water and the temperature change also we have the specific heat capacity of the calorimeter uh, sorry the mass of the calorimeter specific heat capacity of the calorimeter and delta T here refers to a change in temperature so we're going to plug in the value mass of the water heat capacity of the water then the change in temperature mass of the calorimeter a specific heat capacity of aluminium calorimeter which is 0 0.553 and the change in temperature is 2.8 so we're going to do multiplication for this side first and this side and then we're going to add up together and lastly uh, we will get 24676.71 joule and we can also convert that to kilojoule which is 24.67 kilojoule so the amount of heat release in a reaction in aluminium calorimeter is 24.67 kilojoule all right uh, 
I think that's all for today's video. And as for today, you have learned about the types of calorimeter, which is simple calorimeter and also bomb calorimeter. You also have looked into the definition between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. And lastly, you already do the example, first example and the second example. Alright, that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!